Welcome back to Hidden Power. Today we'll be doing our third AMA episode. Listeners have asked us questions and today we're going to answer all of them. No matter what it is, no matter how spicy it is, we're going to have Pokemon questions today. We're going to have uh, personal questions, podcast questions. My name is Dusty Gogoat. We've got Lumio's Post. Hello. And Soul Silver Art. What's up? I honestly don't even know what we're going to be answering. We just have a list of, of topics and we're just I'm nervous get into now it. because you said spicy questions. Yeah, I, know. I haven't like, seen oh all of these. I haven't seen all these so i'm like is someone gonna ask us which the answer is no of course but is someone gonna ask us if we're technically murderers you know yeah oh, i mean no. we we, we, we <laughs> and the, the rule is that we would have to answer truthfully that's like the big that's like the cool. twist we can't lie so it's like we truth can't or lie dare anymore. with no dare option yeah yeah so true okay. that's what we should call this episode so Lumi, truth or dare <laughs> uh, not dare truth <laughs> all right there we go so your first uh question is if you could have any guests on the podcast who would it be and why this is by uh, um, this is by what's their name? Brooklyn. I'm just gonna read your username. It, it is what it is. Uh, um, among us, <laughs> so lover forty seven. Spicy. I see. What, what's Spicy. your answer? Right to off that? the bat. What's your answer to that? <laughs> okay. All right. So first off, I'd just like to say this is this is such a stupid answer, and this is such a uh, a like I, I guess kind of simp answer. But oh. um, but uh, Birdkeeper <laughs> Toby is amazing, and I would have him back. Okay. Again, <laughs> I know we've already had him. I don't know if we can include past Bro, guests. Bro, you just used the word simp, and I had no idea where that was going to go. I know. I, I did that. Spicy, Dusty. We're keeping it. We're keeping the energy <laughs> high, to. man. We're trying to. Which, by the way, by the way, by the way, just saying, uh, I don't know if this is too early to do this, Dusty, but going to real quickly uh, plug our Patreon, because this is what mm. our Patreon episodes are like, honestly. It's just personal discussions with us making fun of each other, grilling, all kinds of that. Crap. And soul yeah. eating or drinking. Yeah, and yeah, soul eating true. octopus. Soul... That actually happened. <laughs> I do have lunch um, today. I, should I eat the lunch to stay in? No, the no. You uh... save that for the Patreon. They're not paying for that, Dusty. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. So, who, so you would have Toby on again? Is that that's what you're gonna waste your card on? No, Toby's no, 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 now okay. that we have managed okay. that, um, I would say because this was kind of a big icon for me uh, growing up uh, oh. with Pokemon is Shady Penguin. Uh, Shady for Penguin real, is legit. Uh, I loved watching his battles when he did the, uh, I think it was the GBA, you know, the New York Mankeys. Yeah, uh, dude, that was cool. Battles, his uh, Nuzlocks he's done. He does a lot of really cool stuff now with like... Uh, Game Boy Loot, Patters, Vinny, uh, United Gamer, which all of them are also great and would be like very close seconds to Shady Penguin. Oh, very it. welcome. So I've got, yeah, I'll, <laughs> any of y'all, if y'all happen to see this and y'all want to come on, y'all just hit us up. We'll have you on. But <laughs> Lumi wants to make a battle podcast so bad. Yes. Which is fun. Yes. That is fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah I watched, uh, yeah, um, I watched Shady in college i want to say that was one of the that was one of the youtubers that i would actually like, oh god i, I was I, in middle school. i put his battles on and it would just like play in our dorm and that we would just sense. like we'd be hanging out we'd be doing whatever and his battles were just on right um also right. i think i actually named myself based on the structure of his uh like username right shady penguin dusty dusty go goat go -Go. sure okay. i should have just i should have just made a dusty goat though that would have been it right dusty goat go goat's better yeah, yeah Gogoat no, is no. better, but it, it has more of a flow to Dusty Goat, you know, versus Dusty Go Goat. You know, yeah, that's yeah. Right, fair, it has fair, more fair. of like an energy. Have you guys been seeing? Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Soul, what's it? What's your choice? I was just gonna say my answer is probably even more lame, but I guess it says a lot about me. I just love people, so I'm like down for anyone to come on. I just like having like even more people come on. I don't. That is a lame like answer. Said, anyone's, that, that's anyone's a lame vote. answer. <laughs> I, enjoy, soul. I enjoy the people. Like, so... There's I not I one person true. that, like, you're like, you're like, ah, it would be really good to have yeah. them on, though. You know, like, like not like a YouTuber you really look up to or anything, like, that, mm. that kind every of got week, you in the business. Every week, I kind of have not that really. I watch a video, and I go, we got to get them on the podcast. And then I go... We have six other people that we've promised will be on the show that we, we haven't already, had on the show yet. We've already had like the some of the best that I, I really enjoy. Like, mm -hmm. on, are, and I just 
I'm so grateful for all of the people that have already like mm-hmm. contributed to the podcast. Yeah. Uh, no, know. we've had some huge hits. I mean, we've had we've had Birdkeeper Toby, True Green, Gator X, yeah. Hybrid Hero. We've had uh, Greg from PKMN. Dude, you know, yeah, we've had was... Jake now. You know. Yeah. Hoops too. Hoops. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Hoops. There's that's literally crazy. so many. It's easy to forget them. Not because yeah. they're not great names that I love. I feel like we're forgetting someone. It's wild. Oh, we absolutely are. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Bro. Oh no! But, of co- uh, uh, high res Pokemon art. Uh, yeah. Yes, that was such a good one. But anyways, yeah, there's, so, there's so many more too that I'd love to have on. But it's just, come on, I'm, I'm f- down for you know, whatever. You know, while we're on the topic, you know, we did have a couple questions. Jan asked, "When is Koo gonna be on the get? Uh, be be a guest?" Wait, wait, Dusty, did you answer? I didn't <laughs> answer. I think. He's Honestly, trying to just get us with these souls. Yeah, the, yeah. The, I said truth or dare, and you said truth. So <laughs> there's your truth. <laughs> I no, honestly, I think Toby and and Hoops and Ron were like that was like the trifecta of people that I watched for the longest time, and it feel like they're in my niche of content. So that was a huge win. Uh, yeah, I honestly, I like I said, I, I haven't, I haven't really not given this too much thought who would i want <laughs> who would i want to have on the show there's all right come back to me because i'm not ready i'm gonna scroll i, I mean i just even come like, back to you we've both answered we already answered. what were you doing <laughs> no but i would just say to keep going further like it's not even about like big names like i would love to have like yeah. tommy on i'd love to have like yeah. just oh oh this friends. is who i love having friends you know tama hero i want tama hero on the show she that'd be fun i watched yeah 100 percent. honestly probably like top three Pokemon YouTubers for me that on my list. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so and and I don't know. I personally, I feel like she is kind of she kind of goes like off the radar for a while, which I can appreciate. Uh, but that for some reason just makes me feel like oh we'll never have her on. But I also haven't asked her if she wanted to be <laughs> on. So that's who, that's who I would, who I would want to have on. Honorable like, well, mention for our fans because I think this is number one for our fans is M and J T V. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be yeah. crazy to have. I would, I would love that. I would love that. Yeah. We've asked them, but like I think we probably just got buried because like our Hidden yeah. Power account has and, like what two followers. So. Yeah, and, and people follow think... us on Hidden Power, so M and J T V will recognize us, so he will come on the show. <laughs> people think we're on friends Twitter. with him. Yeah, yeah, and so I love people that. People are like, that, "Oh, like, can you ask him if he wants to be on?" Is yeah, he people free this assume weekend? we can. Anybody there? I mean, they'll straight up be like, "Hey, you know, Jesus Christ next week," and it's like, I mean, I don't know if we can grab them, but you know, you you say that, but like, I, it's gonna be kind of crazy if we can actually pull Koo onto the show. That'd be kind of a regular, that'd be kind of insane. Uh, But other people, I think, are super notable that are in our space. You know, people like A Drive. I think that'd be fun to have on. Yeah, he's got a he's 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 been going through like a whole life story. So I'd love to learn more about that and what he's been up to. Um, yeah. So that that's probably my answer. But so, do you guys think who's gonna be on the show? That's what Jan wants to know. Uh, we're 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 working on some things. I Let's guess. just say we're in talks. <laughs> yeah, we're in talks. It's difficult get... because of international things. So yes, that's... we're also <laughs> yeah. afraid to get the channel like blocked or like banned <laughs> or deleted from by YouTube or by the Pokemon Company. That's, these are things. These are things we're worried about. <laughs> yeah, there there are conversations that are needing to be had, but they are being half. So yeah. um, that's all we'll say on that. Eclipse wants to know if we're gonna have Masuda on. Yeah, he's actually on next week. Yeah, that's, that's my that's answer. Happening. That's who I that's want. That's your on. answer. Is Masuda? <laughs> actually, I want Iwao on. I want Iwao. Iwao yeah. the goat. Iwao the goat on. You know, I, do they do interviews like that? They only they only talk to. They do like never. right around their games, and that's it. Yeah. Like, they you know, like I remember, us, I can remember the interview. Uh, they, ever since Nat Dex, they just were like, "Yeah, let's not do these anymore." Imagine going. <laughs> we're going from Koo to to like official Pokemon company. People. I mean, that's like the next logical jump, right? <laughs> mm, totally. They'd be like, "Oh yeah, you guys are leaking my games." Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, but maybe we have Ku and Masood on at the same time, have a little debate. Oh my god. For real. <laughs> That's insane. Why are you leaking my games? Because I want to, you know, just. <laughs> <laughs> I'll um, sit there with a bucket of popcorn, whole episode. So, okay, have we done have we done our dream teams? Have we already answered that? We have not technically. No, we almost did though. on Patreon and then got sidetracked. All right, yeah, so I'm let's, still let's... fighting for that to be an official episode, though. 
Okay. Uh, do we have other questions? We have many questions. Oh, we got a lot of questions. Yeah. Right. So maybe a- we'll. That's AK like a Miles, thing. we're we're gonna put that on on some ice. Well, King Nito, uh, YouTube is wants to know if uh, he wants to know what our Pokemon types are and our hidden power types, as well as all the other speed round questions, which also could be its own episode. But do we want to say our Pokemon types and hidden power types? I think we did that already, but we've we done it before. It but we'll repeat yeah. it. We've got yeah. we grow so fast. There's people who don't know. I mean, I know um, him. He's that's a it's awesome. Yeah, he watches. Yeah, and listens. Oh, uh, this isn't this isn't who you're thinking. So, no, no. Okay, different. Can you know YouTube? <laughs> yeah. Are we sure? I think he makes YouTube videos. I've watched. I, it. Yeah, I've yeah no, to I know. Him. Anyway, but you know, um, you're awesome. Um, whoever, <laughs> whichever you are, just for supporting the show, you you're awesome. Yeah. Uh, so I said mine was, uh, my terror type was flying. Cause I feel like that's kind of what a lot of people associate me with is like, I love bird Pokemon, you know, uh, my mascots, Dragonite Lumios post kind of gives like the idea of like, you know, the, the courier Dragonite. So if it's flying, you know, it invokes those vibes, but I said my hidden power type would be water because one thing people don't know about me is that I actually love the ocean. I live on the coast. I... Um, I went just, uh, just not this past Sunday, but the one before, so I don't know when this is coming out, but a few weeks ago, I even went and stayed up to like two in the morning watching over a sea turtle nest and helping them get to the ocean. Dude, that was all. really cool. You showed us those oh, pictures. Was freaking cool. That was really yeah. cool. Yeah. I was, they were crap pictures cause you can't, you know, At cause night. they, they follow the light if it's not red light. So you can't really take good pictures unless yeah. the way we did it is we stood cause there was no moon that night. So we had to stand at the water so that our phones mm. were the moon if that makes sense yeah yeah yeah. the light wow yeah um could you could you can't touch them right no you can't touch them uh with your with your skin but we were given gloves and the idea was you wanted to try to guide them with like sand by like building kind of sand walls to make them get to the ocean but uh to be frank with you everybody out there eventually at some point had to use like their glove to kind of block them off because let me tell you something they did not want to go to the ocean and it actually it was uh not to get all like political here but it was actually like a really big thing with uh like like they were trying to go to the city because they could see the city light and so it kind of shows the effects of light pollution on ocean life you know we were having to build sand walls so they could not get to the city so they were forced to turn and go to the water. I only asked because I wanted. I like want to hold one. <laughs> I yeah, I, let me tell you something. I would have loved to do that, but they wouldn't have. But it was it was sweet. Like you put your hand there, and they'd be trying to climb up your hand because they want to go to the light. And it's uh, it was it was precious. It, genuinely, top three, if not number one, uh, life experience. Underrated animal. In my That's opinion. really very cool. underrated. Very underrated. But yeah, that I'm steering away from the question where y'all's types and terror types. So, so you're flying. Or hidden power types. You're flying, terror types. You're flying terror types. water. <laughs> flying water. I'm, okay. I'm flying hidden power water, and my terror okay. type is the new 19th. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I'll be. So you have your answer ready? Yeah. I, I mean, um, I think this might be the same as my last one. Uh, bug type is my favorite type. And so bug type has to be in there. So. I think norm my my regular type would be bug, and then my hidden power type would be dragon because I, I love think that's as well. I think that's very good for you, Soul, especially yeah. because your uh your little camera setup is so buggy that that works. Yes, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, like the dragon, the dragon's like some the fierce hidden. That's yeah. cool. Fierce yeah. Well, and you always <laughs> like legendaries that's, too. That's so. the hidden yeah, power you that. want, though. The dragon type, like it's yeah. literally an innate power that just spews out of something uh, i like like ancient. little i like the littleness of the bug yeah. and then like dragon is like huge so it's cool yeah that's really cool i think like, uh, i also like Togepi should have been like dragon type <laughs> uh yeah wouldn't that be cool like a little the, dinosaur the beta one looks kind of like one <laughs> yeah so actually that will segue us into our next question but i gotta answer first i was about uh, to say oh. you gotta answer dusty <laughs> <laughs> I, I answer I'm, gonna, first. I, I'm gonna claim the grass type i think that I like that a lot, right? Nature. I think that's what you said last time. Yeah. yeah Grass type did. feels cool. Hidden power. Dude, I'm an Aries. I feel like I, I yell a lot. I could be fire type, but I like the steel type. I feel like I like that a lot. I feel like steel types are really cool. I, I'm doing a video right now about uh, giving Pokemon new metal coat evolutions. I've mm-hmm. always liked the steel type. So I'm into that's that. That's cool. I like that a lot. Yeah. 
Um, cool. But our next question is, and I lost where it was, but they're asking about uh, they're asking about beta Pokemon. Yeah, this is by uh, Card Cardinal Cardinal three one one zero. If you could choose any beta Pokemon to be brought back into the games, mm. what would it be? That is so any beta difficult. Pokemon. It really is. I, I want them all back, <laughs> all of them. Do I even have um, a list of them I can show right now? I feel like yeah, I feel like I need to see the full list, but I have my like off the top of my oh. No, no, this is easy. This is easy. Is it? Yeah. Right I, I, there. I, it's in the frame. The the uh the this guy water right here? starter, the beta water starter. Oh, that's for, fair. Instead of for that's alligator? such a good one, bro. Yes. Now I cool. would not want to take the place of for alligator, but they said bring it back. So yeah. hypothetically, this is our Gen 10 starter now. My oh, my favorite is also in here. And I think it's the one I would bring back too. And it's no, I love that no, one. No, I know it's, who it is. It's, it's literally between these three. Like these are the best ones to me. It's Kingdra, um, right? So it's yeah, the, beta, it's the OG Kingdra. Yeah, Beta Kingdra is like would be one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. Cool. I think it's just it's so epic. I love the boat one though too. I love oh, all cool. of them. Can they all? They are them? all. There's so many good ones. The first one that came to my head honestly was the one that's in the picture next to it with the little, uh, the little like wolf and sheep's clothing thing or yeah. not wolf and sheep's clothing but like wolf the man. little wolf skin thing yeah and then i also i was going to say the uh fire water um seal mm -hmm. sure yeah, like yeah, that yeah. One too. just Bob, because yeah. fire water seal that would have been a cool evolution for pop leo i think or maybe like a split evo for uh sphiel yeah. i feel like sphiel kind of came out of that there's that so many cool beta pokemon we need to finish that beta pokemon episode we do Heck yeah I think, Dusty, um, what's your answer? Well, I think a lot of these Pokemon get... It's probably similar to you guys. A lot of these Pokemon do get brought back eventually. Mm -hmm. I wish we had the full list of Pokemon that we were looking at. I, I, you know, I love Scizor. And I, I think it's... I think Scyther's original beta design... Or the Scizor's original beta design was pretty cool. I think I think that's something that looks different from from Scizor. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm pulled towards that... Again, I'm trying to look for listeners. I'm kind of stalling for time. I'm trying to look at this list. Uh, <laughs> you should be looking while we're giving our answers. <laughs> I am looking. I am looking. I think the Porygon is really interesting. I think the uh, you would oh, like Porygon. No, 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 no. Here it is. No, this is the answer. It's ob it's it's uh it's Turban. It's it's Beta. Are you it's, serious? It, yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's Beta cool. Shelter Evolution. Out of 100%, all of them, a hundred percent. Yeah. It's all so mad. I'm just blown away. Out of all of them. <laughs> well, I, I think it's so it's so closely tied to like a classic Pokemon theory, right? It's similar to how like see this would be another one. It would be like Beta Kangaskhan or the or the Beta Evolution for Marowak, right? Mm -hmm. Where it was basically a Kangaskhan with a skull on its head, you know, basically confirming that Cubone evolves to Marowak, evolves into Kangaskhan, and then that's and then the baby in the pouch is a, is a is a you know, a, an unorphaned Cubone, right? So that's yeah. that's one of it. But I think for me, it's like the idea of Shelder originally evolving into either Cloyster or this other Pokemon, uh, Turban. I got to find a bigger it version exist. of it. It actually should exist. That should exist so easily. I mean, It does I think, exist. That's the I thing. Think it's it so does cool. exist, but it doesn't exist as its own Pokemon. Yeah, that's right what here. the craziest thing about it is. Like, this should be a Pokemon. I think it's so cool. Yeah. Any sort of Pokemon that exists that isn't actually a standalone Pokemon aggravates me, right? Yeah, I'm I get like, that. let me interact with this. It. Where, uh, right here? No, the the slow slow poke slow bro. Like yeah, that's it. This right here, it, yeah. It's actually there drawn on slow bro's tail. Like, yeah, that's, it. that's it the exists. Pokemon. So I think for me, this is the beta Pokemon that I would want to to come back. Because then you have all these like sick. I mean, I literally made a whole video. With uh, Professor Corey about like new evolutions that Slowpoke could have. There's so much untapped potential there. That's what that's what I need to see. That's what I want to see. Um, yeah. So let's see. We also have okay, uh, Osmio on Twitter. How Shout would out. you react to a more lull split Evo? And this I felt like was <laughs> directed towards Soul Silver Arts. So it was. Like, they, they, him yeah. and Lumi and Yori. The whole they're community. Kinda, they're kind of yeah. bullies. <laughs> They're bullies about Morlo. No, they're not. You're a bully. You're oh a bully to Morlo. Well, I think it'd be really cool. There's a lot of mushrooms that he could take inspiration from. Morlo. Yeah. Actually, I would be so down for that because this, 
the it secret to all Merlo. of this is I actually like Morlo, but I really don't like Shinotic that much. Like Ooh. Shinotic is kind of gross looking to me. Shinotic looking. always looked like an al- it's like the little green alien, little green yeah. man. He's got like it, this gigantic thing on his head and it a, looks like, like an alien. Diaper, which I've like always liked. Not the, yeah. I, I, it's not wearing a diaper though. That's kind of you're he's selectively wearing jig- he's wearing, that. He's growing out of a Jigglypuff head. <laughs> Look at it. You tell me I'm wrong. Yeah. Okay, I'll pull he's, it up. She not tick. It's let's see. It's, <laughs> wow, you're like, right. Man, I'm getting yeah. shook from all these nah. souls. I think nah. you might be right, Soul. <laughs> Look at it. That's Jigglypuff. a Jigglypuff. He's growing out of it because it's a mushroom. It's fungus. That's crazy. Okay, it's but that's kind of cool to be honest. I just yeah, don't like cool. his face. His face is really what bothers me the most. It's creepy. It's, it's like an but alien. But it's creepy. Yeah, that's face. what I'm saying. It's creepy it's like, on purpose. Mm. Honestly, anyway. Morlo. Someone, cute. someone screen Morlo's grab cute. that where Soul just did an impression of what its face looked like. Somebody <laughs> screen grab that and please send it to me because Soul won't send Dusty uh, images for thumbnails. So now that's going to be an image in all our thumbnails. I know. I go back and I like, <laughs> I take I take the screenshots from the video. Where he's like, ah! and then that's the new thumbnail. Got to um, talk about being real, man. Got to be so, real. <laughs> what, what, what would you think about this, Lumi? I'm all for it. I love Morlo. Uh, I am not a Shinotic hater. I love Shinotic. I use Shinotic in my Ultra Sun playthrough and yeah. was a big fan of it. Strength Sap, so cool. I mean, obviously, other mods get that, especially now. But that was debuted alongside Morlo and Shinotic. The anime episode with these Pokemon is insanely creepy, but also insanely beautiful, which I think is a great testament to the line. I think that's what they are. They're creepy, but beautiful. No. All I heard was competitive and anime. It's that's not competitive. Let me tell you something. It ain't competitive. Your... Yeah, but it, it ain't in... competitive. I loved it in battle. I loved it in the anime. That's all. Yeah, that doesn't do okay. it for me. It's okay, gotta be. But it's, the it's anime cool is a indie. great way to see Pokemon. I would hate it true. if not for the anime. It's true. It's true. I agree. I I saw some screenshots of Roy and his team. It's literally just and and it's a, it's Oilers. so it's so cute. <laughs> oh, what'd man. you say i said, said spoilers, spoilers. <laughs> he's, oh, so, he's well, come not on, wrong spoilers how's no, that spoiler? the anime i mean a lot there. of people wait to the dub yeah <laughs> you're, you're right. gonna well, piss oh, off well. some anime people wait there for the <laughs> awful right. dub are you kidding me <laughs> all right anyway all right I'll, what's the timestamp? 22 minutes all right I'll yeah that something like that <laughs> no don't cut it next question <laughs> um all right uh we have right here what are your ideas for future Pokemon titles, this is by Big Ladian. Uh, some of mine, Pokemon Rose and Thorn, Pokemon Opal and Jade, Pokemon Ash and Snow. I would have suggested Rose and Violet if we didn't get Scarlet and Violet. Also, I'm aware that some may be fan games, but after almost 30 years, what haven't fans come up with? I think this is an interesting sure. question because for a long time, actually, yeah, for a long time, it you know, the classic Pokemon title scheme was the pattern, might you say, was... Uh, was just colors, right? You take two colors, opposites, right? There were kind of also gemstones. And then X and Y shook it up. Sun and Moon was like even weirder, right? You're like, okay, this is gone now. Sword and Shield, Shield was wild. <laughs> destroyed it. Yeah, it's just it it's just weapons. It really it's, was. They're objects. And then Yeah. Back. The the thing about Sword <laughs> and Shield, Sword and Shield wasn't even like symbolic. I mean I guess it kinda is. It's offense and defense. Um but yeah, now we're back. Now we're back to colors. So how do you guys see maybe like a Gen t- uh, 10 title being... Sparkling really white and glistening black. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Was that um, a specific I'm good question? With that. How do we see Gen 10 titles? Was that the no, How do we see question? Pokemon titles? I would like the ideas a, for future Pokemon titles. I would like a Pokemon uh, Sea and Sky. I know that kind of invokes Kyogre and Rayquaza vibes though, so I get... No, but that's I feel fine, like they, they can do, do something that. else. Yeah. They can do that again. I, Gold and did, Silver that invokes was a Sky. type of theming and a feel in me that i really like but maybe that's because yeah. i'm flying type with uh hidden power water so yeah that makes a lot of sense i think um, what's important though is like they're not too on the nose right like we all like the idea of like pokemon future and past and yeah that's what we that's what we just got but instead yeah, of calling it future and past they call it scarlet and violet mm-hmm. which actually is an amazing name because yeah. of the rainbow and all that yeah yeah um so you don't need to like think of. They're not asking us to like think of something right off the bat. But do you like the naming convention? Do you like the colors? What would you change? 
Uh, I do. What, what are the themes would you like to see explored? Even just thinking about um, like what the next games would be called, I keep coming back to like what they already do. So the answer is yes. I like their naming conventions. I like how they do it. I, I like the colors. I like that they make, keep it simple, like what you were just saying. So I'm I'm all for it. I also like this person's name, Big Ladian. Yeah, Big Ladian. <laughs> we need more Ladian. Okay, anyway. Pokemon hands, shoulders, and then Pokemon knees, toes. Knees and toes for the DLC. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> the DLC <laughs> names are kind of wild, actually. They are cool. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're much longer. Like, it, it's very different. I, I liked it better with Sword and Shield where the DLC names were the names of the locations. I thought that was a little bit cooler than giving like a title because it, it made it they made that dlc the whole way they marketed it was like you were getting tickets to go on a train to these places right. and that was that was how they mark and it just it i love that i thought that flowed really well well um, we can get into some stuff here because the teal mask and the indigo disc those names are like i think that they're crucial to the storylines so oh, i think for that's, sure that's why that they named them that like the teal mask is gonna it's gonna be we never talk about the teal mask but I think that that's the focal point of the entire thing. Um, and the Indigo Disc, I've been wanting to like talk about this more, but I don't really know what the Indigo Disc is supposed to be because I, I mean, it's know. supposed to be Terrapagos, but how is it an Indigo Disc? I don't know. Anyways, it would, would it not be the Academy? Is it an actual Disc? could be though? the it's Academy, like, maybe. Isn't it the Academy? I, I mean, I imagine if the Academy is a Disc, maybe there's some sort of technology that allows... Like, we like we don't know why the Terra terra arium is projecting or terrarium creating. yeah terrarium we don't know no, why that is able to show or like you know habit hab, uh, habitat new pokemon right we don't know mm -hmm. why that what the technology is behind that so what i'm thinking is if that is linked to area zero and it's a similar technology right so that the indigo disc is whether it's terrapagos or if it's whatever technology that is it's uh, it's it's like the it's the power or the weapon behind Area Zero. Well, the thing is, is that like the whole in Heath's book, there's the the disc Pokemon, and then Terrapagos is there, and so it's yeah. like, but it's just not a disc to me. It's not. I don't know if maybe it's a translation thing, but yeah. to me, it's not really a disc. So I, I'm confused on the whole point. It probably is just Terrapagos, but any, either way, the names are important. So some other um some other famous dichotomies. That could be, you know, could inspire some future Pokemon games and themes. Good and evil, uh, body and soul, real and imaginary. I thought that one was kind of interesting. I don't of... like that. Imaginary is too long. Pokemon imaginary. Yeah. I'm gonna no, get it, Pokemon imaginary tonight. No, no. What I'm saying is like these are Pokemon concepts. Imag these are concepts. Yeah. Imagination. imagination. <laughs> that is what we got though. We literally got the imagination theory, which is like Terrapagos or Area Zero creating stuff, and it's all about rainbow type. Right? Yeah, that's true. It's crazy. Anyways, but what I'm saying is like SpongeBob real and spoiled Scarlet. The <laughs> yeah, 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 spoiling yeah, yeah. the real world. SpongeBob spoils Pokemon. So it wouldn't. So this isn't what the Pokemon games would be called, but these are the themes that each version or the the game would explore, right? Uh. I don't know. I, I think real and imaginary is cool because I don't. I don't think we actually have confirmation that that's what Pokemon uh, Scarlet and Violet is about. We don't know if that's actually what the uh, the DLC is about. I'm, I'm definitely sorry, don't. Area Zero, right? Yeah. So we have civilized and savage again. Some of these things are like just inherently political. Like, I think civil one of them and savage is, would be better. Yeah, civil and savage. Yeah, that would be that would not go over well. <laughs> I, no, I, I think that's what uh, that's what Unova kind of is, right? It's like oh, or maybe America. Maybe Nice. No, <laughs> okay. I, I really wonder what they're gonna do. Team for Plasma. Gen 10. I was thinking Team Plasma. Because like, are we just gonna stick with colors? It, 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 that seems like the safest bet. When am I else. getting my Pokemon I gun? Like the, yeah, right. I uh, dude, I like, I like colors. I think the yeah, colors are simple. Yeah, the I colors like are so simple. Right? Well, what's what's the next one you'd pick? Like, what's the next color? You brown pick and on? yellow. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> never, never brown. No. Never well, and brown. brown and yellow paired together specifically. <laughs> What do you mean, God. dude? That's brown. That's the perfect complementing colors. No, uh, it's this is what it is. MP. It's always no, no. So listen, all the Pokemon <laughs> games, mm, maybe like Bro, eighty percent of the thing. Pokemon games are some sort of hue of blue and red, right? Yes. The only right. ones and that brown don't... is a well-known hue of blue. Yeah. Okay. I was kidding. What I'm saying though is like <laughs> even like gold and silver, that doesn't really match, but. 
Lugia, Lugia is in the Ho-Oh ocean, did. which is blue, and Ho-Oh well, and is fire, has blue on which it. is red. Yeah, exactly. So, and then um, I think Res- you could say Reshiram and Kiram. Reshiram and, and Zekrom glow red and blue. Exactly, right? Yeah. I would what say... What if they went back to a gem name, like gem names? Dude, that'd be cool, yeah. I'm um, um, gems. Let's, let, let me look up gems right now. I would do... We probably should say? move on, actually. <laughs> what did you say earlier? Um, cool. It's La, a Gen Lapuz, 10 conversation. Lapuz, whatever it's called. La, Lapuz? I, Lapuz. Uh, <laughs> How do you pronounce that? that? Oh, we, don't, we don't know how to pronounce it. Pokemon Pokemon Jade and Amethyst. Heck po- yes. We have that Turquoise. We have Amethyst Sapphire. Pearl is done. Emerald's done. Amber. Pokemon Jade and Jade. Amber and Jade. Oh, I like that's that. cool. Amber I do and like Jade. That a lot. That's really cool. It could be like a prehistoric setting. Pokemon Quartz yeah. and Topaz. These are so mind. funny. I don't They're mind. cool. Pokemon Fool's Gold and, and Pokemon. Gold. That'll be gold the next Johto and... remake. The next Johto yeah. remake will be Pokemon Fool's Gold and, and uh, uh, I don't know, what's Pokemon like the fake Stainless diamond? Silver. If you're enjoying this episode, consider supporting Hidden Power on Patreon or YouTube channel memberships. We have three tiers, and the lowest tier starts at just $5 a month. Supporters get access to our secret Discord server and help control the direction of the podcast. This is the same Discord where we're recording the podcast right now. We interact here daily. This Discord server is actually where we form the ideas for each episode. If you ask a question, we're going to answer it on the show. Supporters also get priority responses in the comments. Our love and friendship. You get that. You get a yes. little bit of that too. Yeah, yeah. Our favoritism. We like you the best. And if you want something a little bit more tangible, we have merch. What do you guys think about the merch? Beautiful. The merch is great. We've got we've got Team Lumi in a in a beautiful blue. Team Dusty. The in best a, one. In a forest green, and uh, we got Team Soul in a blood red. Buy a T-shirt. Show your allegiance. And if to Team Lumi. Yeah, <laughs> to du- to Team Dusty, and if you act- and if you want something a little bit more subdued, uh, this is actually this is another logo that we made originally for the show. We didn't actually end up using this as a logo, but I thought it made a great merch design. Some it's literally fans. a beta design. You guys it's, love yeah. our beta videos. I love this so it's, much. It's retro yeah. hidden power. And look, when you turn around, this is literally my favorite shirt. It's literally my favorite shirt. Thank you everyone for watching and subscribing. And now back to the video. Actually, you know what? We want to hear more of these in the future. This probably made my week. Uh, we have some listeners who sent in questions, uh, voicemail questions. So we're going to play one of them right now. Let's play Ian first. I have not listened to this one. Hey, what's going on, guys? I uh, appreciate you guys taking this. I'm a big, big fan what's of up, the uh, show. Always looking forward to it every week. But my real question here is regarding is so the cool. potential Unova remakes. So one thing that's ah, – man, one, one thing that I'm a little concerned about is if they do – whether it's like a black and white three – or, you know, uh, I know Lumi's talked about this, like a spiritual successor to Black and White 2. I, I'm really hoping for, you know, Black and White and Black and White 2 remakes. That was kind of the time of Pokemon where I fell off a little bit, like right after Gen 4. And then I kind of got back into it around uh, X and Y. Like, yeah. I think like a couple months after X and Y dropped. So I don't. I really don't remember those games whatsoever, and it's it's kind of tough because you can't get the games anywhere. You have to have a DS, and they're and, expensive. Um, so true. You know, with like red, blue, uh, whatever, whatever it is, and gold, silver, the sapphire. Like, like you can go out and find those games pretty easily, but <laughs> with black and white, I feel like you have to. <laughs> there's like a checklist of things that you need to be able to go play those games. Yeah. Um, so in the event that they drop a black and white three, and understanding that you know, Pokemon kind of tailors their audio, uh, you know, t- tailors the company, tailors what they do to the younger generation. There's like a lot of kids that just missed out on that generation, of, like Gen Not 5 a- as a whole. So mm-hmm. I'm just curious on what your guys take is for somewhat of a solution or what you guys think Pokemon will do to try to, uh, I-, I guess, recap or retell Gen 5, you know, if, if you guys even think that's, you know, possible or if they're just going to skip it entirely uh, and just make like a Legends Kyrium game with a new story in a new setting. Uh, because even with like Legends Arceus, like at least we got BDSP. So the kids that never got to play Diamond and Pearl, at least they have something on the Switch. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, we'd love to hear your and thoughts. You thanks so much. And uh, yeah, thanks. Bro, that hey, was amazing. We, Thank we you need so to have him on. Perfectly. We need to have him on. That's all I'm saying. He like, has a great see, mic, by the way. Ian, you yeah, have an amazing that's mic. That's the <laughs> I feel like your mic's been. better than mine. <laughs> People are asking who do I want on. I like just having every regular. This every is so cool. If you guys on. literally, I mean, that was amazing. That was like literally so the best voicemail we could have ever received. And it was our first one. 
Send us more, please. Thank you so much for your question. Um, I think, I think it's a little tricky because, like, I I totally understand his perspective of mm-hmm. like be, being like not having an experience of a certain point in the Pokemon timeline, right? I think we all have that. Mine was Gen. Yeah, 4. absolutely. Black and White came out in 2010, so we're talking about 13 year old games. Yeah, it's so. The main question is 14 what are they, by the time they come out. Yeah, the main question is like, what do they do? Do they remake? Gen, in, in in like an Ilka style or whatever they remake black and white and then they remake black two and white two because those are you know notoriously very different games those are different stories it's a direct sequel and then it's like well then what do they do then they make a black three right do they make a legends hmm. whatever a pay, right and it's like there's all these possibilities it almost feels like too many games to it's to it's just it's too many games it's too yeah, many no, games to I, remake. I agree. Something's gonna that's get why lost. It's, it's so. That's why next year's game is really uh, hard to think about because it's like, what are they actually going to do? Um, I really don't know. I don't have a good answer for this. Do you, Lumi? Do you have any other ideas? I okay. So I have two thoughts because I I am in the camp of these won't be Unova remakes, but these will be uh, new stories set in Unova. So the first option is the most boring option, and that is that these are new stories in Unova that literally, like, you don't need to play the other. Because to be honest, like, Hisui had a lot of fun references uh, to modern day Diamond and Pearl and like, oh, that character is related to Cynthia. Oh, that character looks like Gardenia. But you did not need to know the story of Diamond and Pearl to play Legends Arceus. It's not like you'd be confused. Uh, so they could do something like that, or they could, my thought is like, remember how in X and Y they, they took time through cutscenes and stuff and, and through dialogue to explain the background of the Kalos region in, yeah. uh, f- about this great war and this ultimate weapon and the six or six, eight foot man running around, uh, and this floet that looks different. They, they all have set this up with like, uh, like in game, you didn't play a game to learn that stuff. You just set up in game. So I could see them kind of retelling the events of Black and White, Black Two, White Two, or really just the important the history, bits right? of it, right? In the same that's way, cool. because that's that's it. It's just it's a history of the region. I that's do, cool. I do though. However, as so that's see, but it it isn't that cool because I do agree that <laughs> uh, obviously a much not better alternative yeah. would be to uh, re-release these games either uh, by actually putting them, like, I mean, I don't want, I would rather instead of a Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl style remake of Unova, I would rather they, like, just make me pay $60 to literally buy a game that's going to have black and white and black two and white two on it, you know, (laughs) but... Like, That's they could sell two different ones that are, it's just a straight port, and, like, one is black and black two, and one is white and white two, yeah. you know? I hadn't thought I'd pay about 70 port. for that. Yeah, oh, I hadn't 100%. thought about ports, but it, they could do, like, so I'm thinking, like, Pokemon Day 2024 in February. It could be just, like, a, a Unova, like, extravaganza. The whole Yeah, the whole year they, is they, Unova. Yeah, they could be, like, oh, it's, this is Unova year, Gen 5 year, and we're going to give you ports. Yeah. like that you can download not not like a physical copy like actual ports just like they did for the 3ds or whatever that you can buy of black, black yeah and white it could be like so fe- you know february we watch the pokemon pokemon day presents and mm-hmm. they go in march or in april you can play black and white you can download it in two months right and then they go but also in you know july you can download black two and white two and then they go oh and also Black three, white three, or whatever yeah. they're gonna call it at the end of the year. And I, that's the final game. That's just I think a timeline. I think the way they could go about it is um. So we previously, when we had Jake on uh, from Game Explain, we talked about uh, another how great guest, by the way. Yes, another amazing guest. Yeah. Um, but when we when Black Two and White Two came out, the 3DS was already out, and Black Two and White Two were um uh they were still ds games not 3ds games but what they did was they made the dream radar which was a game that was for the 3ds only and it was compatible like with 
Black 2 and White 2, it was how you got the uh, Therian forms of the, you know, uh, Landorus, Tornadus, Thunderous. So I think what they could do, and this would be a great way to market this new Switch 2, Switch Pro, is a big question with DS ports is people are like, how do you do the dual screen? If the Switch 2 solves that problem, then you have, you have uh, oh, this new right. Unova game, this Black and White 3, if you will, comes out for the Switch. It is a Switch game. Not a Switch Pro game, a Switch game. But if you have the Switch Pro, it will have compatibility with some DS game ports, including Black and White, Black Two and White Two. The tricky thing, no, the, the the tricky thing for me is like, no matter what the game is, if it's gonna reference Black and White and Black Two White Two, like those games need to be available. That's mm-hmm. the thing where I'm like, it, it it just trips me up every time I want to think of an idea or a solution. I'm like, that does not. Why would they do that? So it's, it another, seems too complicated. I'll tell you right now. It does. So, the, so yeah, right so they now, have to simplify it in a way. Cha-ching. Is yes, <laughs> you say cha-ching, and I and I would buy it, and I'm my wallet is literally right here. I would pay for it right now. But the if, thing if is, if they made all these games available, I would buy them all as well. Yes, but and I think I'm not a lot even of someone that does that. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people don't actually. They'll say, oh, if. If Black 3, White 3 is coming out at the end of the year, I'm not going to buy these first two games, right? Mm-hmm. So That's what dumb. they would I'm actually do... I'm going. I'm going. I'm doing Black and White, yeah. Black and White 2. Mm-hmm. Boom, straight into it. I don't, know mm-hmm. what the, I don't know what the numbers look like on their end. I'm sure yeah, now, it's the like data, when Avengers Endgame came That's not what happened. You rewatched Infinity War, you know? <laughs> I, I rewatched the whole thing. Like, from, yep, from all the MCU. Iron That's what yeah. I did, too. <laughs> Iron Man exactly. down. I actually started with Captain America so I could do it chronologically, but smart, yes, exactly. Smart, smart. Yeah, we have a, we had another question uh, asking about like our thoughts on that new interview where the CEO of um of the Pokemon company was saying like, Wait, oh, are we're, we are we moving on or is this still a part of this? Discussion? This is another question that I think adds to the conversation. Okay. Uh, you know, so like they, I, I don't have it up here right now, but they were they were basically asking like, what do you think about them mentioning that uh that the quality has diminished in Pokemon games recently, and how you know and what the relation is to like yearly releases yeah um and and i feel like i to me like no matter what timeline it is i'm like i'm like i don't think someone's i don't think i don't think someone's like knows about four games in the future and is like i'm gonna buy every single one of those i would do that but there's a lot of people who don't do that so i think there's some like i think it's important for i think it's going to be a priority for the Pokemon company to keep some things to themselves. And, oh, this is what I was thinking about. I think I think they're going to want to continue to outsource these remake games. There's obviously... Possible. That's obviously made them a lot of money and mm-hmm. has opened them up opened them up to focusing more attention on a single game. So It's, you know, it's funny I will because... Say, go ahead, Tom. I'm going to go. Because it's funny because... It, what you said about that interview, which I think we should do like a whole podcast episode on that interview. But I agree. Um, one of the main things is how they can up the quality is if they outsource a game to like a triple A company, like as good as a company Pokemon. as them, if not better. You know what I mean? So they like a big company is working on um, this instead of like a smaller one or just like a really quality one. Um so I think that that lines up pretty well. I still am like very much like this game could be outsourced. This black, this uh, yeah. black and white Gen Five game could which be is, outsourced. Which is which is interesting to think about because I think another thing with Pokemon, with it being out, it was kind of, it's kind of like Star Wars. It's like what is Star Wars now without George Lucas? So what would Pokemon be without Game Freak? Right, well, and Game Freak would still like, be there, but we're entering yeah. that era. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, exactly, it's like, we are entering it, that era. Can we compare it to what came before? Can we compare it to Gen One in in the foundation that was built? You know, I wouldn't say it's without Game Freak. It's just without the same not. Game Freak. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's they're they're Less all involved. different employees, like changing. So it's like that's really what's happening. I don't know what you were gonna say, Lumi. If it's still relevant or, um, I'm be honest, I forgot it. But one day, yeah, big. it happens. <laughs> so <laughs> one so, so <laughs> before, my, before we end I, I know, this. Well, no, I, so I think another idea to add to the like a whatever the new Gen Five game is going to be, right? Mm-hmm. To add to that, I think a really cool idea would be is if we have, again, assuming it's going to be kind of like Scarlet and Violet, where it's like this big open world we can explore. 
Uh, we don't know that, but I, I would like to think, yeah, I'd like a remake. At least like, segmented open world like yeah, Legends. I would want, like, a, I'm, I'm like, I'm ready for a remake that's, like, full scale. Uh, if, if it is like that, I think there's great opportunity in Unova, right? We already know that there's, like, a total of maybe, like, 12 or 13 existing gyms. They could add another four, right? And then it could either be a thing where, you know, you literally choose your own adventure, and you don't need to battle all 16 gyms or whatever gyms there are, mm-hmm. right? You can only, you know... So you're basically traversing through the region from 10 years later after Black 2 and White 2, whatever that time period is. And you can go anywhere you want. You can go anywhere you want, get whatever set of gyms you want, and there's all these characters, and they've changed a little bit. And then it's like what you're saying, Lumi, where there's they're giving all this context, right? In a way, if we're going to make some sacrifices, the things that won't be sacrificed there are the Pokemon... Are the characters, are the are the region and the locations, uh, and then maybe the mechanics or like some of the things that made Gen Five what it was, right? Whether mm-hmm. it's the whether mm-hmm. it's the uh, the Pokestar Studio or the Dream World or whatever, Team yeah. Plasma, right? Whatever, and then the things that you do sacrifice are the story. So maybe yeah, you know, I think I think I mean the important thing too is I think when we think like a future Unova game, we think Team Plasma would be involved and stuff, but it doesn't have to be. And if it doesn't have to be, and they go with a new team, a new shadow story, tri- the shadow then to be honest, the only thing that people need to know about Black and White and Black 2 and White 2 is that one legendary is with the hero from Black and White, and the other legendary is from the hero in Black 2 and White 2. And you could even have N come in and N uh, like be trying to, looking f- to look for these heroes with you, and he's kind of how you learn this. Like, he's like, yeah, I used to. I had befriended these two hero trainers and they ended up with the legendary Pokemon. We need to find them. That's really, to be honest, all you need to do. Now, yeah. if you're going to have Team Plasma be a p- big part of the game, you do need to explain Team Plasma is actually something that's been terrorizing this region for a while. M was actually once their king, but then he became a good guy when his dad turned on. You know, you're going to have to explain all those things. But at its very basics, people just need to know where the legendary Pokemon are now. And that is with the hero from Black and White and with the hero from Black and 2 and White too. I think also, just to add one more thing, Black and White is one of the worst-selling mainline series Pokemon games. Black 2 and White 2 sold even worse. Really, what is the incentive for Pokemon to make a Black 3, White 3? Assuming it's going to sell even worse, right? Yes, right. there's not an incentive, but if it's a new story in Unova and it takes yeah. place after that, Zekrom and Reshiram are going to be a part of that story because it's a Unova game, and they do have to, they have to keep up with the canon, right? They have to say... You know, these legendaries are with, just like how in Black 2 and White 2, they said, you know, well, one legendary is with the hero from Black and White and one legendary is within. They're going to yeah. have to set that up. So I'm, I'm all for that. I think that's, that's what they have to do. They got to take it from a different perspective. I So to wrap this all in a bow vaguely <laughs> um, and to touch on like the second part of his question. It's just it seems like it's just too much or too complicated and we really don't. I have no idea how they're going to pull it off. What, like, in what context this game is going to actually exist? Unless it is two, one of two things, and I think it's either just going to be a straight up remake that has both of both stories in it, like so, like mm. a black and white and black two white two remake, um, or it's like a whole new game that you don't really, you don't have to play the first games to like know, and it's just mm-hmm. in in unova and it's like maybe it's a legends maybe it's not a legends but it's just a whole new thing um and and maybe maybe it does connect back but it's just for the people that played that game and to answer your question dusty like even though they were the worst selling like the the atmosphere or the that's not the right word but the yeah the, everything's where, where changed Pokemon about was. gen 5 yeah everything's yeah. changed about gen 5 it's like a cult classic these days mm-hmm. like everyone all the kids love it's it it's the emperor's new groove of pokemon yeah there's tons of movies like that yeah like people didn't like things at first and now they love it so like the gen 5 hype is alive and well so i don't the amazing think that spider-man of pokemon mm-hmm. yeah I, I just i don't see them actually doing the ports the or one. actually recapping like the best we get is like a little recap story at the beginning mm-hmm. maybe and so i'm just like which honestly that'd be a be sick way to open up a pokemon game it just like it cuts to black and you just see the words a long time ago and then it like kind of has imagery of what happened mm-hmm. I- i'd love that that's cool yeah instead of instead of like uh, the rc is cut scene in the beginning like it's literally like 
it's it's N or someone, right? Or whoever the rival is that we haven't met in the story yet. And mm-hmm. it's like we're seeing there actually were cutscenes. That actually is the that is the opening cutscene every time you open up like a black and white game. You see N being discovered by Pokemon, yeah. he's being anoint, mm-hmm. anointed king. Oh, dude, that would be so cool. I think I think Bianca could honestly be the one who explains it to you because she's the professor's assistant, yeah. so she very well could That's be the need to professor see. in this game. And then yeah. it makes sense, too, because she has a relationship with these characters, too. She was the rival, the childhood friend of the black and white hero, and then she was the one who gave the first partner Pokemon yeah. to the uh, black two, white two hero. We Even if like... it's something completely new, I just want to say that it's not that it can't be a black and white three like spiritual successor. I'm yeah, not saying it's it, gonna be called it won't that. be called black three white. Three. Yeah, but even if it's like a whole new like story or game, I think the story will still connect in a way that it's like black and yeah. white three. Absolutely. So, anyway, that's a that's a whole right. podcast episode. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. Uh, so we get a, a fun one from Elite Trainer Kenway, also a channel member. Shout out to you, man, and a friend, uh, the and a creator. <laughs> Yep. So he, he writes that blue, uh, the Blueberry Academy is off the coast of Alola, and that's why we see Z crystals in the Omni Terra Crown in the trailer. And I also believe that's why Alolan, Sandshrew, and Executor are in Blueberry Academy, and also all caps why Worlds will be in Hawaii in 2024. Also, that kind of makes sense because we're all because we're a lot all saying really good stuff. Because we're, we're, we're strong connections for because sure. we're all saying like uh, the Blueberry Academy is going to be off the coast of Unova, mm-hmm. but guess what? Hawaii is part of yep. the United States. America. Yeah. So maybe True. maybe in the Pokemon universe they're actually. I don't think together. in the Pokemon world it's like that though, because I think Alola is like its own. Thing. Well, there is. And this it's supposed is to be in near fairness. Joto. In fairness, yeah. though, there is there is. It's only in the English uh, version of the game. I do not believe it's in the Japanese version of the game. Sure. But in the English version of Diamond and Pearl, Professor Oak refers to Kanto, Johto, and Sinnoh all being a part of the same country. Hmm. So, I mean, countries could still exist. Yes, that's true. No, you're right. Regions. Because what's even crazier about that is that we've been we've done in the Pokemon world, we've done real world Japan, all those regions. Mm-hmm. Then we've done usa basically yeah it wasn't back to back but it was Too part like of that. them yeah yeah and then then we did europe so like we're doing like france and spain now so like it's just mm-hmm. like kind of those regions you know mm-hmm. put together i think um well in a similar way to how like galar and isle of armor and crown tundra are all kind of separate areas but at the same time are all galar yeah i forgot about galar too yeah um yeah okay. what was the question again really quick there was no question it was just a fun i, I theory. think we answered the question <laughs> it was just a no, fun no. theory yeah. okay yeah no but i this is what i was gonna say about it is that if there weren't leaks <laughs> this would be like totally a normal like thing to think oh like, i would be thinking it yeah yeah see there's tons of connections that us as fans make and people hate this actually that we just like go after like every little thing that we could pick out but that's how easy it is to like make a theory off of these connections that probably don't exist but just because of what we know from leaks it could could be <laughs> like, okay. I don't maybe like they do at least down. kind of confirm a relationship between Unova and Alola because there's a real world relationship yeah so we got a question from Fox Wars JB uh this is a question for Lumi how much will the 19th terra type change competitive i mean and they they did like hashtag team Lumi just for the right. Oh, man, Thank they're you. supporters. That's yeah, that's because they're they're real ones. They're they know what's <laughs> up. Um I mean it it definitely will. Uh the scope of it, you know, we we don't really know without knowing the details, but there's no shot it doesn't, you know, change it a good bit. I do yeah. think I do think uh, it's funny I'm this is the downside of recording two episodes is I almost just reference something, but then realize, wait, we, it's the we spoke about episode. that last episode. Um, but uh, we talked about in that episode we just recorded, uh, we talked about the 19th type a little bit. And we talked about uh, how I, one thing I mentioned in it is that this is not going to steamroll the other types. They're going to want you to still have some Pokemon that you want to run Terra Fire or Terra Dark or Terra Dragon. This is going to be an additional thing. And I think people are expecting this to be the super broken thing where, like, we're going to 
it, all the other terror types become irrelevant now, you know, because they're saying like, oh, this will make it where all your moves are always super effective, or oh, this will make it where you get, you know, uh, like a protean uh, type thing where you just change types to whatever move you're using. If they do that, the other terror types are irrelevant, completely irrelevant. They're not going to do that. But it's at the end of the day, it is adding a new type into the game, albeit only through Terrestrial, but it's adding a new type. So it is going to shake things up. You you go back to Gen 6 and look how much Fairy changed things. All right, we got another True. question by Noivy. Uh, this is another channel uh, member, channel supporter. Topic, best you, thing, Noivy. addition, or mechanic from each mainline game. Let's do, uh, for the time, just for time's sake, uh, let's just do uh, just your favorite addition or mechanic uh, from, from anything. So this could be like Pokedex, music, gameplay, characters, berry system, HM moves. I kind of okay. miss HM moves, guys. I no. kind of miss HMs. No, no, it, no. It, no. Cre it creates like a level of difficulty for the games. Actually, is this yeah, what I get your answer then? Is your answer HMs? I think HMs. I think it doesn't even need to be HMs. Did we discuss this with Jake? It doesn't even need to be HMs. It no. just yeah, needs to be Jake something that's about, tied. Like, you should be able to ice beam a lake and yeah. glide over it. Bro, that is the coolest thing. And it. I, I like that idea as like, Kind of like how Zelda works, where you like unlock things. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. there should be something that you unlock that you have to do that. Maybe they could bring HMs back, but you don't have to have them on as moves. Like they did that before. Yeah, it's a skill, yeah. not a. Yeah, that's kind of so like much what better. they did with uh the they did that with Pikachu and Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. They didn't learn Surf or learn these things. They learned the skill and like it wasn't yeah. a move slot. It was just something they could now do. But then then we have all these Pokemon fans, guys. I'm sorry. I, don't be too offended at me, but right, they they are like they want everything to be like you choose, open world, free. You know, like I'm. Mm -hmm. There's two. There's, Pokemon was never made like that. First mm -hmm. of all. And games are good when you can't do everything all the time, too. I don't know where yeah. that whole, like, idea comes from. I think, but I think it's, it's from immersion. It's from people wanting yeah. to feel immersed and feel like they're a Pokemon trainer, which I totally which is get. super valid. I get it, but I don't like... I don't like... I like... Even in even Breath of the Wild, I've said this multiple times, like, it's not a proper Zelda game, in my opinion, to me. Like, I, I like having, uh -oh. like, set things that Canceled. you have to do. No, I've said it a million and times. I don't even care. Deleted from YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> deleted from everything. People Anyways, always... we're having to remove Soul Silver Art from <laughs> <in> <laughs> our. We guy. are now Listen, it was due to recent host. controversies. We will be parting ways with Soul Silver. <laughs> Give me like Zelda games that you have to get something out of the chest to advance. Like you open the chest and yeah, you have yeah, the, you get an like, item that changes thing. everything. Yes, that's yeah. what you like I an love HM. That. Yes, like an HM. It's true. I, I wouldn't mind it. I just don't want them to like take up slots on my, my exactly. Board yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. So is your answer HMs, Dusty? Yeah, yes. Okay. So what's your answer? Can we rephrase the question really quick? So I'm just, uh, just what, what, the question what is your was favorite like, feature? what is like something Pokemon that feature? was introduced into a Pokemon game, like a feature that like mm -hmm. is your favorite? You should go, Lumi, because I don't really know. Okay. Um. Uh. I'm hmm. sure that y'all can call this, but um, it, it's it's battle facilities, good ones, uh, ones with rewards. Battle Frontiers is what I'm thinking, but also the Pokemon World Tournament was an excellent uh, choice as well. But I just I don't like the battle tree where and the battle tower from uh, Galar, where it was just like keep battling, keep battling, keep battling. Like there's not really anything you're working towards. Uh, dude, um, I would take. But I, I Dude, liked like world go get so symbols, cool. go get what, what it was like little cards from um yeah yeah uh, the, the one the thing. frontier and then, symbols yeah and then and then like with the world tournament in its own way it was rewarding because while they didn't give you a badge or a symbol or anything you still you had to beat the Unova leaders to unlock all the other leaders and then you had to beat all the leaders to unlock world leaders and, and then, then you, you had also to beat that see to the unlock brackets. champions the brackets are really cool for me because as you're playing through your match the tension of, or like the backstory of like whoa all like you just, know misty's battling just brock misty. right now yeah, yeah. you're like <laughs> oh, oh and brock won with the type weakness that's crazy <laughs> right and that's like yeah. it doesn't matter but it's it's fun that's the, it go, that was something good about uh shout out to sword and shield honestly because that was something good uh about their league too was the bracket style i liked that yeah what about you soul i i was thinking about it really hard and when Lumi said that I was like, really that's hard. actually really, really what I, I'd like to. I'd really definitely like that, but I'm just going to be 
if I choose something different, maybe not that Megas come back, but that Megas, G Max, any of those forms yeah. that they create, that they should come back more. Those often. designs aren't lost, right? Yeah, that they come back more often. I don't want to say sure. like every game. I'm just saying yes. like like Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl could have easily had Megas in it. Yeah, exactly. And then you know we'd be satisfied for a, a little bit, and then mm -hmm. you know like a couple generations later or something, not like 10 generations later, you know, like yeah. who knows the next right now, technically we should not see megas again until gen six remakes, which is right. going to be next year, right? No, no that's Jim five. <laughs> We're going to deal with the DL Kalos DLC. There's still people out there that are like Kalos. <laughs> anyway, Blueberry academies and Kalos. I still claim answer. that I started that wave. That was all me. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I just want to, you know, I'm I'm reading comments right now. Uh, Courtney, our our channel member, is like cackling that our first instinct to do anything uh, when there's new Pokemon is to like make a tier list. I just want to acknowledge that. I think that's <laughs> it's that true. It is kind of funny. When we did it, I was like, oh boy, we're just we're going. Oh, we're doing this. it right now. I haven't even thought about this. Yeah, I just <laughs> oh, found yeah. this like 20 minutes ago. All right. Next, uh, next, uh, it's a topic. It, it's a comment. Uh, this is our friend uh, Python's gone postal. He's like a he like breeds pythons. He's like a scientist, but oh, he sends cool. me all these messages on Instagram like all the time, and I never know what to do with them because I want to like hop on the phone or like send a voicemail or something. Uh, but I'll just read one of them. What are your thoughts on the next Legends game actually being a prehistoric world? Uh, there are enough fossil Pokemon and extinct species inspired Pokemon, i.e., Chespin line. Uh, to populate an ancient Poke uh, biosphere, we could see new forms of fossil Pokemon, true forms, if you will, and regional paradox forms of, of extinct Pokemon. I could even envision us also going to the future world in the same war, uh, game and really hammer home an o overarching theme from the Pokemon franchise. Sustainability and ecosystem advance uh, advocacy. Surely this would give us new future paradox forms and shed light on the whole paradox phenomenon. I can even imagine the world, uh, the other twin brother from the battle subway being there. That's Ingo. A um, couple things with this. Th this the is the other one. Actually. This is it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. You're right. Yes. Depends on which one you think is the other one. Yeah. <laughs> I assume he meant because a lot of people and I'm just going to quickly address that. A lot of people assume Ingo was thrown back in time. So Emmett was thrown back in time somewhere else. I don't yeah. think that. Why, why can't just really Ingo true. be thrown back in time? Yeah, and so Emmett's still not. in the present day. And mm -hmm. honestly, I like that story better because you have Emmett in the present day, like kind of wondering what the heck happened to his brother. But, you know, uh, anyways, to address the question, I'd be all for that. That sounds cool. Like a, a prehistoric Pokemon game. I, and I, I mean, like the thing the... is like Pokeball shouldn't exist then. So I, I think there's a lot Ooh. of questions on how you like, how you do that while keeping canon um yeah. but I think, the, I think the big issue for me is also like i don't think paradox pokemon are actually ancient because they're paradoxes so they're from a different dimension or timeline or whatever well so that, that wouldn't that's even a question that hopefully we get answered in indigo disc because honestly they out, might just be from our imagination that's, yeah that's <laughs> true. i just put out a tweet about this today that um the whole like tcg thing just further like says that they're oh. not that they're just ancient and past like so the, i wanted the to next bring that new up tcg thing is paradox pokemon ancient and past and it's ancient like future, those are like qualifiers future. so you Whatever. can you yeah, can get sorry. a you can get an iron valiant card mm -hmm. and it, it won't be like a type but it's classified as the ancient version or i guess it'd be the future version it's like a new iron valiant well, it still had a type it still had a type. It's just, yeah. it's a new, like, sub-mechanic, kind of like yeah. single strike and rapid strike. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So... It's just, why would they... I, I mean, here's the thing. Putting I, focus on it is just like... Oh, okay, I, but counterpoint, counterpoint. I think I TCG think, never gets it right. They have their own canon. That's true. True. Um, but also, I will say, too, like, with single strike and rapid strike, uh, they gave that to these Pokemon, you know, to kind of... Uh, that was supposed to be their equivalent of agile style and um strong style whereas mm -hmm. i would say this is the past and future thing that is them trying to incorporate uh court drive and protosynthesis into it i'm just saying it's it's sus it's it, sus is, it is it is it is definitely just, a little ooh. but what else what else would you call that though right dino form dino well, form dino robot one. form dino form not gone there 
It, to me, okay, it's just but, like. But they're the reason they home. did that is because in the games they went there. They said this is ancient Pokemon. They do These say are that, yeah. future Pokemon. So they're they're just going with the games. And it could be mis. It could Real be like a misunderstanding. <laughs> I mean, because it's I not just... like they're not going to wait until Indigo Disc to start releasing Paradox Pokemon to TCG, and they're not going to beforehand go ahead and spoil it and say imaginary Pokemon. You know. That's mm -hmm. facts. All right, you guys want to pull wait. up our other voicemail that we got? Did we sure. answer that question properly, though? I don't know. Uh, well, I did at least. Y'all yeah. didn't say how you would like it. <laughs> I well, I I think I think there's some inconsistencies there. I I kind of like the idea of like us not harping on legends so much, and I kind of like the idea of legends just actually just being a pre like an old game, right? An mm -hmm. old uh, a game that takes place in the past, and it doesn't need to be Arceus, and it doesn't need to follow a formula or a pattern. It's literally just like Pokemon Legends, something right like Root Fossil. And then, hmm. <laughs> and then there's Lilip, and there's all these other Pokemon. Like I think that's so cool, right? Yeah, definitely. And that'd be, cool. I think it, I think it'd be a lot of fun. I don't think it, you know, I, I think it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think the we Crown right? Tundra was a really fun experience because it, it kind of felt like a little part of the Pokemon world that has not been touched or has not changed since the pre the ancient times. Baker de Forte, appreciate you. It says AMA, bro. All right, you guys ready? Hold up, bro. This is going to be insane. <laughs> what? What up, Hidden Power Nation? I'm in the middle of this extreme rager, but I had to step this outside is because I heard that is the this Hidden a bit? Power podcast is recording an AMA soon and would love to hear voicemails. Is this a so bit? I said to my buddy Brian, <laughs> I got to get there. What this is up? not real. My question is for um all you guys. What is your favorite mythical mon? My favorite mythical mon is Celebi, obviously. Because Little Bro goes back in time and then forward in time, and he parties at all times. <laughs> what is this music? That's insane, dude. I love it. Bros, thank you Bro. for all you do <laughs> and for hearing my message. To the Hidden Power Podcast. Lumios Post Like Malone <laughs> is out here every day spinning undeniable pokey facts on the day. not wrong. It's true. Lumi, it's literally true. I love your positive vibe, man. It Thank you. It reminds me of uh, a magnificent Wingo having an S tier. Water flying. Dude, Water I flying. love this man. Yo, Dusty. You Yo. are the good, bro. Grass boys, we're on that Sigma grind. I feel like set. he's not gonna like me. Why up, dude? Soul you suck. Soul Silver Art, bro. Some of your takes are straight. See, back. I told you. Respect your your passion for the arts. Uh, I'm Sicilian, but I feel like you and I could still get along. Yeah, you're right, bro. Hey. Check out Soul Silver Art on X. Hey, look at him. His posts are straight <laughs> X.com. Anyways, it has been an extreme honor to be uh, considered to be featured on the Hidden Power podcast. Dude, you're on guys, it. Hidden Power Nation, <laughs> go and support these guys on Patreon. By yeah. The way, I wear Heck. my Hidden Power podcast hoodie. Get yourself. All these ragers. Heck and yeah, dude. Everyone says that H Unknown is straight gas. I would love, guys, to hear an unknown form tier list someday. Yo, we should do that. Bracket. <laughs> Oh Anyways, my god. That sounds like a good Wait, holiday bro, episode. I gotta hit up this pokey stop. I gotta catch up with Brian. I am out like a bell sprout. <laughs> Later, Dude, boys. Who's, who's Brian? What in the world I was that? I love this man. I seriously, like, he's that was my like new five favorite minutes. person. My Dude. jaw hurts from the laughter. I know, my yeah, face yeah. hurts. <laughs> Um, bro, his name is, or the, the name of the thing that he sent us is just, what up? <laughs> what yeah, yeah, all yeah. caps. <laughs> He, I was he actually at a rave forever. No, was that he, was I'm, I'm actually downloading this so I can actually have this on my computer. To that was to. incredible. I could, I could see actually it being incredible. Real. I, even if it wasn't real, it was still the effort was just incredible. It was, it was a whole I, honestly, I think it's cooler if it wasn't real at this point. Yeah, right. Yeah, he like committed <laughs> to the bit. I like he, he like puts he the didn't... music on in the background and then turns around and he's like, he's like, yo, what's up, guys? And he's just like pretending the whole time. 
he's he right, also though. he has he's like friends. surfer vibes which i love <laughs> So this is good. sick, dude. That this was is actually sick. incredible. I thought something bad was gonna happen, but it was just good. I, I was vibing with him too. Like I was there, like, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> what, what's your favorite mythical? That was the question. Oh, okay. Um, that was one of the. That was one of the twenty. No, questions. that was the question. Actually, he that was the he question. Was just talking the rest yeah, of the time. Yeah, yeah. And it was great, and it was glorious, and I loved every second of it. Lumi oh, literally is the star of the show. Uh, yeah, post Malone. I'm just saying, none of y'all yeah, got told. Like, none of y'all post told Malone. me. None of y'all got told you were as, like a like a graceful wingle. All I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, um, I need to get a wingle sitting cutie. I, I now is want a wingle favorite. sitting cutie. It's so. Um, Jirachi's your favorite. Jirachi's yeah. your favorite. That's a really good one. I, I would Jirachi's be tempted to go that route if it wasn't the eye on the stomach. That's the best. That's one of its best. Yeah, that's like one of the yeah. best things about it. Um, I'll give you mine since I just know right away it's Zarud. Zarud is my favorite, one hundred percent. He, cool. my my boy out That's there. That's weird. What was I, his name? Do you know what his name was? It's like bro. What up, it a, bro? It was like it was like JoJo. It was. Oh, I know he's Italian. Coco. It was Coco. His, his last it was name Baker is Deforte. Oh, Baker I think he meant. Deforte. I think he meant the character with Zarud. He's definitely Italian. Um, but he probably disagrees with my Zarud take. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love Zarud. It's awesome. We could go over it, but I just I love that it has um, a long oh, he's like, on Zerud again. He's like, it's, Lumi, you're you're the god. Dusty, you're the goat. Soul, you got some weird takes. <laughs> but you're pretty okay. But I love the enthusiasm. <laughs> he was like, we'd be friends in real life. He literally life. Like, yeah, gave he said, Soul he a said participation e, trophy. Yeah, he said E for effort. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he also shouted out my tweets and everything. So That's I'm true. Like, on it. X.com. Yeah, yeah. Go yep. follow Soul on X, X content creator. So the other right thing is, I, I like an unknown tier list. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Would you do yeah. that? Would you guys want to do that? We're just like, mm. we got to do a Gen 4 tier list. We got to do, we're, we're, pl Are we we're planning to do in seven days. Are we the alphabet? Is that what that is? <laughs> no. Well, it, like yeah, it's, the, letter it's a. the unknowns. It's pretty cool. I, I mean, like they. The I feel like they actually look very different. Sure. Um, am I crazy? Like I feel like I, I like. I'll do it. I don't think I'll. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll enjoy it, man. Oh, it, we I'll should, enjoy it. Oh, I want to do that so bad. I, maybe we can do a form tier list. Mm. Nah, just unknown. We gotta do one just for unknown. It's our guy. Yeah, that's true. We'll we'll do it for the holiday. That sounds like fun. But do it for Baker, man. Lumi, how much? How, how much time? Bro. Yeah, for real. Thank you, everyone, for sending in voicemails. Oh, Lumi's I didn't answer the question. Well, yeah, what's your favorite mythical? Mel metal. G Max or just Mel Metal? Oh no, regular. That's lame. The G Max is way better. No, it's not. Um, Jelly donut legs. <laughs> he looks cool. Le oh, oh, oh my gosh, we almost missed it. Hold on. We have another question by Lutu. I, I said I would answer this, so we gotta answer this. Yeah, we should. I almost didn't answer this. That would have been <laughs> he would have not been. We'll answer it, ignores it. <laughs> All right, right here. Out of these four frames of Mewtwo from Pokemon Origins Episode Four, which is the best one and why? Okay, I've so, thought about this one. I'm gonna go with me number too. two. So this is number two. Oh, that is nice. It's like he just he took a hit and he's recharging. That's I'm so pretty anime. sure that he's nah, it's the way that hit looks like it did nothing. Like you can tell the steam's still coming it's off smoking. him, but he knows he's about to win this match. He also yeah. this design this like and that shot Mewtwo I feel looks very monster like and I Yeah, I love that. that is cool. This one is sick. This one's like this is like Annie came within the last 20 minutes of Revenge of the Sith. This one's so cool. This one's evil. That, I love that one this. is my favorite if we're if we're Yeah, this one's here. my favorite. That's this one's a little favorite. more agile and I like the perspective, but this one is the coolest. He just it's like a force like a you got to put like tuck the French. He's pinky. the reason why is he looks awesome. That's about it. Like he yeah. he looks like he is just about to take some names, like take out oh, everybody yeah. there. And it looks more like I feel like this Mewtwo that they drew in this um it looks like a monster. Episode, it looks different from other Mewtwo kind of. So it just I like this one a lot. I like um, this one too. The tail is a little bit more slender. I will say this is a close second though. I agree with Lumi. At, at first this was my my go-to, but I like, like them you, all. If, if you look at them all they together, are all great. oh, it's so sick. They I, all I, are great in different ways too. Like, like the thing that's great about this one, the second one doesn't have as much, but the second one has things that this one doesn't have. Yeah, it truly like, is a great mod, Mewtwo. It really is good. This one should have like a, a lightsaber in its backhand. That's what I think. That would make it cool. That would make it cool. Jedi Mewtwo. 
Um, and then be a Jedi well, or this, this, this is like our short was just a, a joke, but here we go. <laughs> I, I committed to it. Oh, and yeah. then Pearl enthusiast wants to know is Sunflora the best Pokemon? And this is our last question. Um, no. Do we have to think about why are y'all thinking about? No, I'm not I, thinking about it. I'm just thinking about my friendships. I don't want to break uh, any. Yeah. I want to use Sunflora in a gen two game at some point in my life. I want to use some Flora that's when it to, would be good. Uh, to feed the sharks. I want to use yeah. some Flora when it to evolves. To Quill. <laughs> I would, when it evolves. I would, when. I, you heard it here first, folks. Soul Silver Art has revealed that a some Flora evolution is indeed coming. And Talk that's the knows. show. Thank Talk you. Knows. Thank you, Drogain, our uh, mythical tier channel member. We wanted to take a minute to thank all of our channel members and Patreon supporters. You're making this show possible. Thank you uh, to Elite Trainer Kenway, ENT, Drogain. He's actually at Mythical Tier. Uh, we have OFCA, Nick Fearby, Donnie HB, Noivy, Billy Goldfang, Courtney. Uh, we also have Mike Shelton, Shirley Nico, Daniel Samps, King Lee Majesty, Bogey White, Max K, Jerry Eaton, SB Juju, Kyle Miller, Wild Roar, and Courtney again. She's she doubled up, which is nice. Huge, yeah, huge thanks. Appreciate everyone. Big thanks. Also, go get yourself an embroidered hidden power hat. It's a look at you can wear it backwards, you can wear it like this to a rave, you can do whatever you want. Also, <laughs> Espathra is not a, a bird t shirts are now out on our website. Uh yeah, go check it out. Appreciate everyone. Sick. Thank you so much. Subscribe. We'll see you next time. Love you all. Peace. And if your yeah, if, if your if your question wasn't answered, leave it below. I'll see you.